Good morning, guys. Good morning. We are going to get started here briefly. Um, we are live streaming on Facebook, the Sales Hustle Club. How exciting is it? This is going to be an interactive meeting, so uh, we're getting started here momentarily. Welcome, 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 all people. Uh, we are talking about how to sell better. I'm Donnie Tuttle, your guest host. If you are expecting Robert Hartline today, surprise. Uh, he is, he's doing good things, doing cool things. He asked me to step in as a collaborator with him today. And a lot of it is, is because we believe the same things. And that is that sales is one of the noblest professions on the face of the planet. We believe that selling is an act of love, not an act of war. And I believe that people who are willing to go all in on helping others by helping them make good decisions about themselves, those people deserve to win. Uh, I will be inviting you guys in to interact with me throughout this. Um, we have we have some open chats. At the end of this, we may even open it up for a little bit of coaching. So uh, a little bit about me. I'm Donnie Tuttle. Uh, I am the author of sell anywhere it is uh it's a uh, the book is called live your adventure while crushing sales um it's a two and a half hour read or a two and a half hour listen on audible if you're an audible book listener and i'm here today to share with you the idea of uh let me kill the heroic music <laughs> goodbye heroic music uh but we're gonna be talking about sales as an act of love, right? What if instead of us wrestling with people to try to convince them that what we have is something that they want and they need and all of those things, what if, what if it could be something that felt happier? It felt more like fun and less like, like a fight. What if that was the case? Well, uh, I wanted to share a little bit with you about my story, but before I do, I'm just going to ask for those people who are here Again, participatory, right? I need you here. I know that the experience is the uh, is the best teacher, and so I'm just going to ask you um, in the chat box to just to tell me which dog are you? If you were one of these dogs, which dogs are you? Are you the you the clown? You the cool guy or gal? You the nerd? The romantic? You the serious one? Are you just the happy, go lucky? Drop that into the chat box right now. I want to see who you are. Maybe you're a mix of the two. Maybe you're none of them. Maybe you're offended that I called you a dog at all. So uh, just go ahead and end all of them. Okay. So we have someone saying every single dog. I guess it just depends, right? At the time of day that we catch you, the nerdy one. Okay. Love it. Love it. Um, yeah, which one are you? It is important, by the way, that that we look the dog that we are in the face and say, you're a good dog. Good boy. Good girl. Good boy. Right. Think think about this. Um, most of us spend our time in our lives almost trying to correct who we are to change our behaviors and to corral the parts of us that are the worst so that we can create good results. And it's almost like we're looking at ourselves saying bad, bad dog. And think about that energy for those of you who are dog owners or ever have been a dog owner. Think about the difference in the energy that your dog brings when you say bad dog or good boy, good boy. And I know that I, I'm not a recent dog owner, so I know that those are probably like curse words these days, but you got to know, right? It's better for you. We got a golden retriever for sure. Love it. You got to know that it is better for you if you're able to look at yourself and say, good boy, good girl, you're doing good. You're doing good. I want to share with you a little bit of of my sales story, and maybe it resonates with you. And hopefully, hopefully, it it frees you. Um, my goal is today, hopefully by the end of this, to help you to see yourself a little bit more clearly so that you can make this thing a little bit less weighty. We can make the hustle maybe maybe a little bit more like a whistle. Maybe it's a little bit more fun, a little bit less like 
work, or maybe it's both put together. But I want to take you into my story. This was uh, in the middle when in the middle of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, and let me actually give you a backdrop of my story. So uh, I was a sales professional. I'd sold five different things. I was a top producer in everything except for one thing, which was real estate. I I never I didn't stick with it long enough. It just wasn't for me. But uh, at one point back in 2016, we decided that we were going to journey around the world and I was still going to sell. I've been selling since 2002. I was a school teacher turned salesperson and it took me a while to become a sales professional. And I think a big part of it happened in the story I'm about to tell you. But we were we were traveling. We left our town of Gainesville, Florida, and we would travel. And every two or three months, we'd show up at a new uh, Airbnb, sight unseen. It was my wife and I and our eight children. And I left the comfort and the coziness of all of the market of people who knew me and liked me and trusted me. And I found out that it actually, it, it, it was it was really sucky. It was brutal. All of the things that I had before, all of my advantages were gone and I had to learn to sell again. And so I chronicle that trip and that journey and the process of me being able to refine my sales skills as well. But I've got to tell you, I should have been super happy. We were traveling the world. We were experiencing great things. And that was actually kind of where I met uh, Robert in the midst of that, because I knew he was doing something from Tennessee and Costa Rica. And that was that was a big part of our connection. And one day in the midst of it, I, I realized that actually this was me. And I'm wondering if there's anyone out there who's ever felt like this. This is a uh, this is an image of the Greek legend of a Sisyphus. And a Sisyphus was the guy who was, for whatever reason, he ticked off the gods and he was doomed to roll a stone up, I think Mount Olympus. It was up a hill. And as he was rolling that stone up the hill, just as he was about to get to the top, the stone rolled back on him all the way back to the bottom. And he had to start over and do it again and again and again. And if I were to describe what, what sales looked like, this would have been that picture. I essentially put on this other identity so that I could go and do this thing that had to be done. There was nothing else that, else that was going to reward me as much as selling was. So I had to go sell. I've, are these eight kids, what am I going to go back and teach school again? I don't think so. So I had to keep selling. And what was presented to me and maybe even you is really this one version of selling. And you, you've got to become this kind of person and sell this kind of way. And so what happened was I crafted myself into the sales warrior. And I called myself this. And you know, I can even see this on uh, some of the things I was doing um, in the past is that like some of my old journals, I had to write my, you know, like I, I would stir myself up, myself up and get excited. Like, come on, you're the sales warrior. You can do this. Pick up the phone. Go, 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 go. And there was this, there was this, like, I had to almost pep talk myself up to go do this thing. And sometimes it wasn't, it, it wasn't the best. And, and actually there came a moment when we were in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho and and I was having, I had a bad day and I had two bad days, actually three bad days in a row. And, and at this point I was working from a home office. This is before everyone else was because of COVID. But here I was, I was pushing this stone up the hill and I got done and, and I, I checked out from, from my work and I, and I, and, and all of a sudden I didn't wash that stuff off me before all of a sudden I'm around my family. And even though I'm in front of my children, my head was back, back here thinking about work. And so I want to know if there's anyone out there right now, if, if anyone has been there, I'm just going to ask you to type in the word me in the, uh, in the chat box here. And if you're looking at this on, uh, on Facebook Live, for those of you who are, who are uh, viewing it there, um, even now or later, uh, just put me, I'll interact with you. It's okay. But if that's been you, just put it in there. The thing that I didn't realize was I didn't realize that that I I had a choice and and almost it always felt like I didn't have this choice. I had to go do this difficult thing 
right? I had to go do that. And it's like, there's such a, there's such a powerlessness that comes when we feel like we have to do something as opposed to when we have decided to do something. Isn't there a difference? And, and I was, I was under the weight of, uh, of, of that difference. And I've got to tell you that three days in a row, my kids came to me, dad, are you okay? I'm okay. Dad, do you like your job? I love my job. Dad, what, like, what's going on? And here I am, I guess I was, well, I was like 40 something. And then I guess I was like, it was 2017. So it's like five years ago, four years. It wasn't that long ago. And, and I, and I realized that I wasn't doing that great. My sales career, this is like the first time of this first six month stretch really in my life where I hadn't been a top producer. Things sucked. We're living this dream life, but I just wasn't, I wasn't feeling, I was failing and I was pretending at the same time. And, um, and I decided to do something a little bit different. And, and a part of that was, you know, I guess, let me, before I tell you what I did, let me, let me, let me give you maybe a little bit of a reframe. Okay. And my question is, is what if, what if sales really, instead of us just being the, that, that warrior, what if there were other ways of, of being the warrior? What if there were other identities that we, that we step into it? I was, I was studying uh, different things, Carl Jung, the hero's journey, all of these things started kind of registering with me. And I, and I realized, I began to realize that there are different types of heroes for different types of stories. And I can tell you that I learned this for sure, that you can't predict the future without acknowledging your past and your trajectory depends on your identity. And what I was doing at this point, guys, is I was actually, I was putting on something that was different. I was, I was choosing a fake identity. I was choosing something that I thought I had to be. And I was putting aside the truth of who I, who I really was. I was actually, um, I was, I was not living into my heroic identity. And so I'm going to be inviting you to live into yours. And we'll talk about what some of those are. And this is really the wind up for the whole thing, because I believe this, listen, once upon a time, there was a hero. And a lot of times we spend our time like putting on the disguise of Clark Kent when we're really Superman. But there's a, once upon a time, there was a hero. And in every story you ever read or, or, or watch it all, that hero discovers their powers. And when they discover their power, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. When you got that glow, it is, oh gosh, um, why am I last, the last dragon? There we go, the last dragon. But the question is, is, is there, are, there are parts of you that are amazing about you. And how many times have we left those outside because we thought we had to? We thought that there was only one way to show up. And that was what I did. The only way that I could figure out to show up was being this warrior. What are the unique parts of you that you felt like you had to leave at the door? What are those? And what happens if we bring them in? Now, for me, one of the things that I decided was I'm like, you know what? This isn't even the me that I like. What if I was the me that I like and I actually changed my identity? I got a literal name tag. Ready? Here it is. I got one of these. Hello, my name is name tags. And I wrote down something that encapsulated the me that I liked. I'm like, you know, I don't like it when I'm fighting and I'm arguing and trying to do everything right. You know who I like? I love it when I'm, I love having fun. I love being happy. I love caring and, and just being able to move about freely. So I wrote my new name down I, and I took a new one and no longer, no longer would I be the sales warrior. I became, let me see if you can see this, the joyful farmer. And I, as I became the joyful farmer, what, what, what was the difference? Well, I, did, I wasn't going to wrestle anyone into something that they didn't belong in. I was just going to happily approach new people and invite them into opportunities that I felt like might be a fit. I was going to treat prospecting more like an Easter egg hunt and less like a wrestling match. And what happened, and I don't know, I don't know which parts of this like came first, 
But first off, I liked me a lot more. I liked being who I was when I did what I was doing a whole lot more. I liked the fact that I liked me when I was doing it. And I liked the people that it resonated with and connected with a lot more. And I was doing things maybe less to form and format, maybe less to script, but I was following something that I would say was a, it was the bigger script. It was this. And as long as I got to be that guy, it just felt good to do what I did. My sales, well, they doubled. We ended up traveling for about two and a half years all around America and Mexico with eight children. It allowed me to do that. And then we settled here um, at the uh, at the beach here in St. Augustine Beach, Florida. And the reason I share that with you is because I've been able to help over a hundred other people who are in sales and a couple hundred other people who are in leadership change their trajectory by changing their identity. Because we all know for anything to be sold, who's the first person that has to be sold? Boom, right? It's the man in the mirror. It's the girl in the mirror, the woman in the mirror. And you don't just like, we, we know that's true about the product that we sell. But what about yourself? Because people don't just buy that, they buy you. We all know it. We all work that way. But have we paid attention? Have we paid attention to ourselves? And so I love the power of I am. I just believe that when we show up as a person that we know that we are, that we want to be, it creates an unstoppable force. So conviction isn't just that you are convicted that you are, that your product is good for this person or that you could serve them, but it's also convicted that, man, I got the juice. I'm awesome. And I can tell you this, if you're acting like someone else, you are spending a whole lot of energy trying to project something. And eventually you don't have, you're not gonna have the strength to hold that up and, and, and confidence gets eroded. But when you get to show up as you, whew, it creates a whole different dynamic. I believe this, and you can, you guys, uh, you know, snap pictures of all this that you want. I believe this, you be you, the most powerful, you know, other than I am, those are three powerful, most powerful letters. This is probably the second most powerful grouping of three letters that, that I feel it's you be you, meaning you be you, you be yourself. What is inside of you that the world needs? I've seen too many people who are nerds try to act like they're fun. I've seen too many people who are caring try to act like they don't care. I've seen too many people almost try to become the opposite of what they are instead of bringing the, their strength to the table. So I am going to let you know, you can go ahead. Um, if you wanted to go to uh, take a personality test with the, with the, um, uh, the actual personalities that I'm about to share with you, uh, these are from a guy named Carl Jung. He's the he is the progenitor, the creator, founder of all personality tests, all the disc tests, the the um, uh, what's the other one? Can't think of. Eh, whatever. Uh, all of these tests they come from from this guy, except for the Enneagram. Um, and so Carl Jung essentially broke it down into twelve archetypes. So we're going to go through these. We're going to go through two things. We only have time for two. It's the drive and the friction. And so I can tell you that a part of the reason why I was not performing up to the level that I wanted to perform to was because there was dry, there was, there was friction and I wasn't addressing the friction. I was showing up in a way that didn't allow me to access one of my most powerful parts and that's care. I thought that that was a weakness. Turns out it was a strength, but who would have thought? So um, you can go on to, if you're interested in any of these personality tests, you can go on to donnytuttle.com or you can go on to purpose.quest. And either one of these, at the very top, it'll say, find your heroic archetype. It's free. Just go find it. Yeah, Myers-Briggs. That was the other one. Thank you. Myers-Briggs, DISC, all of these wonderful things. I think even um, StrengthsMinder, a lot of these came from from this. So let's go through the, the 12 archetypes and then, and then we'll, we'll dig in. And maybe I want you to look and find yourself. And, and there's, there's two versions. I want you to find the, the self that you wish you were, that you kind of been telling yourself you should be. 
And then I want you to actually be honest with yourself and say, yeah, that one right there is probably me. Because all personality tests for a while, for me, I, I personally went towards the things that were more like a fighter. I tried to be that person that was like, I'm going to dominate. I'm going to fight it. I'm going to, and that was because that's what sales culture and, and business culture tends to reward. And so most of us, like out of all of the people that you think are that, that, that Rocky fighter mentality, I find about 75% of us are just pretending because that's what we had to learn so that we could become successful. So here we go. A uh, real quick overview of them, the warrior, and you can even just tell by some of the, um, by some of the names, what they are, right? The warrior, the jester, the optimist, otherwise known as the innocent, the magician, the explorer, the companion, the lover, the everyman, the creator, the ruler, the sage, and the rebel. Um, those, those are, there, there are other words for the 12 in some ways, but, but these are them. And I want you to first off think like, are there any, I'm going to flash back and forth between the 12. Are there any that you feel like, huh, these two probably are the two that I might be, or maybe these are the two that I've always tried to be. So I want you to just go ahead and pick out two and a pop back and forth between here and here. And we'll talk about some of the motivations and the drives and the fears and the frictions of each of these. And some of them are very close. And I will tell you this, uh, where we're about to go is if you can frame sales in the way that you, that you tend to see yourself, you're, it, it changes everything. Because what we're talking about here is the most important script, which is the internal script. So hopefully by now you've got your one or two that register with you. Um, I'm going to invite you to go and drop it into the chat box. For those of you on Facebook, uh, I'm not looking at Facebook currently. I will go back to those a little bit later. But for those of you on Facebook, just drop it in there and I'll interact with you on that as well. What are your two? If we were a happy hiker, explorer, love it. Okay. Yes, I will. Oh, you have a, oh. Yes. Okay. Someone's asking for co-host to change. Let's see. How do I do this? Participants. Bear with me, guys. I'm making Gretel the co-host. Okay, cool. I didn't realize that we had a hard stop. So I'm going to go, let me go another 10 minutes here. So here we go. Let's look at some of the drives of these things. And then understand this, though. You're from energy. What you're from is more important sometimes than the action itself. Are you doing something from fear? Are you doing it from the heroic version of yourself, right? It's like, do I get to, am I acting like the lover if I'm the lover? Or am I acting, am I trying to pretend? Because the story that you tell yourself about yourself, right? That is the, that's the great script. That is the great script. So let's talk about the warrior. Maybe you're a warrior. A lot of us wish we were. Some of us are. Some of us can't stand the warrior. A warrior is that person that is, they're driven by winning. They're not so much driven by people um, per se, but by winning. What does winning look like? A warrior wants to win the game. A warrior trusts themselves. A warrior doesn't mind standing alone with what they have. If a warrior feels like they have to give up control, that's a, that's a part of the resistance. If the warrior doesn't see a way that they can win, well, that's a resistance. So if you're selling and you don't feel like there's winning, if you don't feel like there's no one's keeping score, if you don't feel like anyone's going to recognize there's no trophies, you might be in a losing situation. Warriors tend to see things as battle and, and as a way of like, how can I uh, become the victor? Maybe I, maybe I have an advantage at the end into a warrior that, that is cool. That's fine. If you're a warrior, I would actually create checklists and knock them out. And that's a, that's a great way to win the day. If you're a warrior, get done as fast as possible. Make a contest, make a game out of anything. All right. The sage, sage is kind of the nerd, right? The sage is this person that says, you know, I seek wisdom. 
I seek to overcome um, and, and, to, and to show the world how to do things. I want to set up an order, but I want to do it and in, in, in do it in a way that feels smart. They're always inventing things. They're always coming up with a, with a smart way of doing things. And sometimes if, a, if someone is a sage, I've, I've worked with sages in sales, and if they feel like what they're doing isn't done in a smart enough way, they'll stop doing it. And so, uh, but if you're a sage, you have to be careful to, um, to not overcomplicate things. Sometimes a sage is about to take action. And before they take action, they'll go back to the drawing board and rethink it and make it a little bit smarter. They'll make that website a little bit better because they're so afraid of getting it wrong. Maybe there's a better way. Maybe there's a better price. Maybe there's a better product. And so they tend to be over-researchy. Okay, if you're a sage, find a way to be smart. Find a way to share your intelligence. Find a way to share briefs and, and things like that on, on, on LinkedIn on, you know, with, your, with your people. There's just a way for you to get to show up as a resource if you're a sage. Okay? Here's a famous one. We know this guy, seeking to change the world through knowledge and wisdom. Then we have the creator. For you, you're the, you're the person that's always inventing a new way to do things. Um, I was a top copier salesperson back in the day because <laughs> I didn't get permission from my copier company to do this, but I found a way to create videos that I could I could uh, drop off with, with um, uh, front desk. There we go. Um, as a creator, I ended up... Um, you know, was able to excel because I was, I was creating things. Creators are like sages. They can tend to overcreate over. They over give too many details. They sometimes a lover, right? Maybe you're a lover. You, you want to you do things for love and you love that you love people. Hey, release that. Find a way to make sales an act of love. You know, these guys have to make sales an act of creation. You make it an act of love. Like that. If you don't do this then you're not doing, you're not doing, you're not being kind and good to people. You're not rescuing people. Lovers want to rescue people and bring them to a state of bliss and happiness. So viewing, viewing sales as a way that you can help people to do this. And for me, as the joyful farmer, it meant that I wasn't going to try to fight you. I was just going to try to love you. So this is a big part of my, a big part of what changed. And it, it, it just, it, it changed everything for me to be able to see things as, uh, as that. Now, this person, if they feel like they're being mean or if they feel like they're taking advantage of someone, they become disengaged. And so you have to make sure you're talking, uh, self-talk and framing things and narrating things in a way that doesn't, uh, doesn't get in your way, right? You have to take action. We have a companion. The companion is a person that is like a lover, but they're always just doing things for other people. This is the nice person, the nice guy, the nice girl, right? It's the one that's doing things for others. Uh, I worked with a, a guy who was a commercial real estate agent in Louisiana, and one of the things was he realized he never did things for himself, but it was if it was for someone else, oh, he became heroic. And for those of you guys familiar with the Lord of the Rings, um, the guy on the right ends up actually carrying the guy on the left, you know, to his final, final place. So that he's like he that's that's what a companion will do. They will put you on their back. And so so make make sales an act of friendship, make friends. And that was all. Um, uh, his name was Gray. All Gray had to do was just his his whole quota was one friend a day. Go make one new friend a day. And he didn't see it as like one sale. It was making one friend. And so that was important. Then you have explorers, right? Explorers, if you're if you're selling, you want you want to find new things, new opportunities. You might not be necessarily um in love with the idea of sitting around and taking care of all of the old accounts. You want to explore new ones. And so Frame all of these, frame your, your experience as a way to get out there in front of new people. Frame it as a, like when you're presenting, maybe you're helping them to explore new options and new opportunities. An explorer, I will tell you, the resistance you will have is if you feel like you're not being novel enough, you might disengage. And so again, like it's like we outsmart ourselves. That's a friction the explorer has is boredom. If something is boring to you, you will tend to, you'll tend to resist it and, and, and go away from it. Okay, the outlaw. Um, <laughs> probably a lot of you guys here are a little bit different than other people. And another way of saying the outlaws is, is the rebel. Uh, one of my favorite sales groups out there is, uh, it's called the Rebellion, the Sales Rebels by, with uh, Dale Dupree. And he's just like, hey, go be different, guys. Be yourself. Find a way to be different. And, you know, an outlaw, if they feel like they're not being different, they just won't do this, the same thing as everyone else. And so sometimes, though, we have to, like, you should do things the other the same way as everyone else. 
But I would say if you're an outlaw, frame it in a way that actually allows you to, to be a little, just a little unique. Maybe for you, if you're selling, instead of cold calling, maybe you're sending bomb bomb videos. Maybe instead of uh, knocking on someone's door, you know, and doing it a certain way, you're doing it, a, you're doing it a different way. And so with me, I learned how to give gifts in a way that, that got people's attention. I wanted to be different. And so that outlaw is important. Jester, you're just someone who wants to have fun. You're someone who wants to, why don't you make sales fun? Make it a game. How many people, you know, can you, you know, can you meet? How many, how many people can you make laugh? How many people can you, <laughs> we had, uh, we had a couple of key words. I was, we did telemarketing for a while and uh, there was a guy that uh, he ended up, he was always using, there was a certain word he was using wrong. I can't remember what it was, but all of us around him, uh, we wanted to see how many times we could utilize that word until he realized, <laughs> Eric Albin, if you're listening, I'm sorry. Uh, but we we did it in a way just to, just to have fun, right? If you if you can have fun doing what you're doing, boy, that that's the F word, right? Have that fun with what you're doing and other people have fun with you. And we're drawn to that. But if this guy tries to go become a fighter, what happens is it just kind of ruins the good things about him or her. So it's okay to have fun. Invite it in, bring it, frame it, make it that way. Now, this person, if it's boring, that's he's one of those people, he or she is one of those people that that might resist it if it doesn't feel exciting enough. And so I would say, you know, don't um you don't have to only go with what's exciting. I hated being this guy, but you know what? I'm I'm him. I'm the everyman. I'm just like you. I didn't want to seem like I was better than anyone else. And there's a power in the everyman. People trust the everyman. People trust the all shucks guy, the all shucks girl. You don't have to wrestle people. You can just be like them. But you're going to have to probably see it a little bit different. You're going to have to change your script a little bit different. You're going to have to do things that, that allow people to see you as them and, and take away that salesperson um, persona that they're already judging you at. The optimist, right? This is a person that's kind of like this: the joyful farmer just trips into things, and and it's just they're they're just seeing what happens. They're they're not even considering what could go wrong. They're only considering what could go right. But again, that's a that's an asset. The ruler wants to make things right. They want to bring peace to the galaxy, peace to the companies they're working with. They want to help people. And some people see rulers as like these scary iron iron fisted people. But the question is, is if you were if you were if you walked into a place and you knew that you could restore peace and balance to whatever it is, I don't know what you're selling. But can you imagine if this company had your your product and and peace? Peace comes to them. Now they're free to do the other things. That and being able to see this and saying, give me the ball. Let me do this for you. Let me to show you how to do this. We need those people. They may not seem as caring about people. They're more caring about systems. But we need those. And so I'm, I'm just asking you guys to find yourself in these. Take the, take the archetype test. You can take them in other places as well. But DonnieTuttle.com or uh, Purpose.Quest, you can go either place. And I would say just like, like, Allow your brand, right? Allow it to be something that people feel. The goal is to make people feel something. And who you are is what you feel. If you if you don't believe in who you're being, you're not going to feel it. I was challenged by someone um, before, when I used to train salespeople, and they said, no, most people aren't being successful because they're not telling people how to feel. And I'm like, how do you tell people how to feel? Do you just say, you should be afraid, or you should be happy or excited? He said, no. The way you tell people how to feel is you got to feel it first because whatever you want people to feel, if you can experience that emotion before they do, they will, they will naturally feel it with you. Thank you for dropping that in there, Gretel. And so, you know, if you want people to feel something, know what that is, be intentional, you're a professional and you need to go and feel it first. Understanding this, it doesn't matter if you're in sales, if you own your own business, anything, when we're developing anything, you've got to believe it first, right? Belief in, in origin matter to your business. And I believe this to my core, that confidence is the language of influence. All the words and pictures and presentation, that's all, that's all window dressing, right? Being able to grab hold of who you are is one of those keys of confidence. 
So I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to do that. I'm going to ask you to, to deal with that. Just look at yourself in the mirror and say, am I being true to me? Am I like, am I, am I hiding some of my power? Because I thought it was a weakness. I thought my care was a weakness, or I thought my, my funniness was a weakness, or I, I thought my nerdiness was a weakness or whatever these qualities are. And I'm saying there is a way for you to bring that to the table, my friend, and allow it to allow it to connect with someone because the easiest you to be is the one that you actually already are. The more masks that we put on, the harder it is to maintain those things. And if we can find a way to access that thing that's genuine within, it's the place where we're going to find it's easiest to actually create belief. Belief in your product, belief in you starts with you. Be the dog that you are. And don't be, don't be afraid. Right, fear comes whenever we, when, when we allow ourselves to become frayed, like this rope is frayed. Right, so it's like I've got to be this other thing, and, and it's almost like separating from who we are, and we're leaving that version of ourselves at the doorstep somewhere. And I'm saying, invite him, invite her into, into your next meeting. Invite them into the next door you walk into. Invite them into the next phone call. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna end here, but I'm gonna give you a few ways. And, and some of you guys can, you can feel free to ask questions. I've got a few minutes and I'll, I'll take questions or any of those things. Um, if you have any, you can go and pop them in and I'll, I'll actually just start, start answering those. And you can do it directly to me or in front of people. But I began to frame as the joyful farmer, I began to frame my phone calls. I would actually literally tell myself this out loud before I picked up the phone. Oh, this person wants to hear from me. Oh, I'm about to change their day. I am looking for cool people. I'm only looking for the cool people. I don't need everyone else. I know there's some out there. God's got some hidden for me. I'm going to go find those Easter eggs out there. And, and, I, and I just talked to myself in a way that allowed myself to frame this as fun. I would say things like, it's my job just to go find, go find the ones that are, are a fit. Not everyone's a fit, and that's okay. I'm going to go find the ones that are. When I walked in, <laughs> the, for those of you who are walking in and doing cold calls that way, I commend you. It is I, the, my best life stories, probably sales stories come from that. Uh, the, the reality is, is like you get to, before you, before you jump in, you get to tell yourself something and how you narrate your story is everything. Be that hero, have fun with it. And, and that's what I would tell myself, man, I'm going to have fun. I'm gonna, let, let's go have fun. I'm going to go have fun before I get on stage. I, I want to help these people. And I want, I want to have fun. That's my drivers. What are yours? And what are the ways that if you were that character, if that character was in your story, how might they get to the goals that you have? So that is, uh, that's me finishing up. If you have any questions, pop them in here. Would love to answer and interact and, and share with you any Anything, of course, you know, um, take those free tests. Those are things that are, that are, it's just helpful. It's helpful. Your job is not easy. And so it's definitely not easy if you're going through the weight and strain of doing it as someone else. All right. So I am seeing no questions here. I'm going to go over to Facebook and see if there are any there. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't shut that. I don't know if I shut that down or not. Can't tell. One never knows. Oh, it's still there. Cool. Love it. All right. Well, I'm not, um, I am not seeing any here. And so what I will do is I'm going to, uh, what is the opinion of the best test to take? Oh, okay. Good. Uh, good question. Um, so some of the best tests, um, uh, the free one that I have is pretty darn good. It, it, it's, it can give some insight. Um, I would say, you know, if you're looking uh, for work, I've really enjoyed the um, the Strengths Finders. Uh, I I like the Enneagram. There's some good Enneagram um, tests that are out there. Um, the, um, I, I think I think all of them are helpful. I'm just I'm just a geek with all of these things. But I will say it can become really complicated, and you have all of these little parts and pieces. And I will tell you, whatever you take, take it twice, because usually the first one you take isn't the real. It's not the real you it's the you that you kind of want everyone to think you are it's like take it once and then say okay but if i'm being honest and i'm not going to share this with anyone this is what it really is and you go back and and uh and do it that way so yeah i would I, you know 
I, I would say don't take the one on Facebook that says like which Harry Potter character are you or whatever, like which Scooby Doo character. It's not those. It is it is definitely more, you know, you probably are gonna be paying money for most of the of the decent ones. Um there was there's a new one out called Working Genius that's fun. Um, I've paid for all of them and taken all of them. I do believe this. I believe that when you align your personality towards your desires, like your your vision from your gifts and talents and connect it to your people, I believe that you become an unstoppable force. That is what um that is what I that's what I I, I personally believe and uh and and see and you know that is the that's that scenario. So, um, cool. Any other questions before we bounce out of here? No. Okay. Well, I look forward to interacting with anyone on any of the channels. You know, find me on LinkedIn. Um, that's where I'm probably most active. YouTube, actually, I do a ton of stuff on YouTube. Um, probably more life stuff on YouTube, but there's some sales and business stuff on there as well. And of course, you can uh, you can get this on. I would, um, <laughs> I don't know how I'm interacting with Amazon. I don't know how they're getting my actual physical books, but download it on Audible. I would say uh, download it on Audible. And if you want my book, um, find me and text me maybe on LinkedIn and I'll just send you a copy. I think that would be the easiest way on that. So, all right. Well, if there is nothing else, guys, I'm going to wish you a good day and um, remind you of those three most powerful letters. Well, the six most powerful letters. Whatever you say after the words, I am, is the most important thing you'll ever say. And the other thing is, you be you. Release that power of you into whatever you're doing and, uh, and go, go be great. Make it a great day.